Hello and welcome to week five of Nurture Nature. Over the last few weeks we've been looking at different techniques um, that you could use in a mixed media collage and this week we're starting to put together a collage. We've got three weeks to do this so we're going to look at designing it uh, this week and then over the next two weeks putting your collage together. You can use any of the techniques that we've already looked at any that you particularly liked you can use if there were any you don't like you don't have to use them but we're going to make a mixed media collage inspired by our local nature hopefully you've been out and about looking at what you can find um, birds or plants or bugs anything um, and also inspired by Mark Hurld um, who is an artist from York and he does printmaking and mixed media collage um, inspired by British wildlife on your um, worksheet, PDF, you've got some examples of collages by Mark Hurled. And so they're really useful to look at. There's a little bit of writing about them there. Um, so you've got those to help you. And I'm going to do a little demo in a minute of one that I've done from a photograph I took just outside New Mills up near Thornset. I have actually chosen one that's quite complicated and I wish I'd chosen something simpler but I'll show you the different techniques I've used and how I've put together my collage. There won't be any more videos or PDFs because we've learnt all the techniques now so you've got three weeks to put together your collage. Uh, when they're finished they'll be framed and we're going to um, put them, uh, find some, a really good home for them. It might be a community centre or a care home or something but um, they'll be up on the wall somewhere brightening up somebody's space. So you've got three weeks to put it together. Um, this week it's really about designing and thinking about how you're going to put it together. I'll do a little demo in a minute and hope you've enjoyed the project and looking forward to seeing all the results at the end of the three weeks. So I'll say bye for now and I'll see you in the demo. Bye. Hello, um, this is the photograph that I've in, uh, used as inspiration for my collage. It's a pheasant that I saw up near Thornset. Beautiful colours, I really liked all the colours and the textures in the bird and I was really um, excited to get so close to it to get such a good photograph. Um, it has turned out to be quite complicated though, but um, this is what I've done. So the first thing I did was drew out my pheasant and if you've got your A3 size sketchbook, if you want to do a full page, that's brilliant. If that's too big, you could do a half size page, so A4 size or A3 size. And you can work landscape like this or you can work portrait like that if you prefer. It doesn't matter which way up it goes, but the frames fit A3 and A4 size. So I'm going to or build up my pheasant on here. The first thing I did was I did a tracing of it so I could cut the shapes out to match um, the papers that I wanted for each different section. So I've done a tracing. You should have some of this newsprint or some tracing paper in your kit. And I've just traced the pheasant. I'm not thinking about the background at the moment. I traced the different shapes. So... What that can do is it means that, where's my pheasant gone? There he is. It means that each um, section of the bird I've got a template for. So if I was going to to um, find a paper that was right for that bit or I want a blue paper for that bit, I can cut them out as a template. Um, so once you've drawn your bird and traced it off, you need to find the papers or the techniques that you want to use for it. So I made a page of um, paintings for the different areas of the pheasant, similar to this. I mean, this, these are not for the pheasant. I've just done some different examples there for things you might want to do. So I've used the wax resist technique like we did on the bird. And I've done some sponging there and I've added um, little details and just whatever you're doing, you could do a page of um, paintings or make some textures and papers that would work on your pheasant. So where's my pheasant gone? So for instance, here's my pheasant 
and here I've used a wax resist technique like that and I've added some little bits of gold tissue paper that I found. Um, I've printed these um, tail feathers here onto, brown, uh, onto some paper that I painted. So I painted some paper and then I used a bit of corrugated cardboard and a bit of old wallpaper to print textures on. And that's what I've cut the feathers out of. Um, for these parts here, I use some of this collage paper that's in your kits and I sponge some paint on it to um, change the colour a bit. I use some tissue paper there, layered up and I put some paint over it and I made a little stamp which had the textures on that I could see around the pheasant's chest there. And I printed this onto there, but I also printed it along these bits. And you can see I've printed it here to highlight some of the coloured bits there. And it's sort of made the pheasant um, stick together. So that's just a little funky foam stamp that I've made with little wiggly bits that give it some texture. So you could use a stamp to add texture. Um, I've also used... There's the gold tissue that I used. This is an old tea bag. I used that for the around the eye and that's an orange paper. I've used a bit of tissue paper. So I've used different um, papers there. I'll turn that over so we've got a white background. And the way I've done it is I've made my papers. So let's say I've made this paper and I thought that this might be good for this section under here. So I've then, this is my tracing copy. I've cut out that shape there. I'm just gonna do it roughly now. And then I can use that shape as a template to cut out the piece I need. So you can draw around it or you could just hold it and cut it. So I've made my papers or chosen my papers. You don't have to make your papers. You could use pages from a magazine. You can use all your ready-made collage papers. You could just paint, paint sections. So I'm gonna take him out of the way a minute and bring back. The original drawing so that would now stick onto there if I wanted to do that next bit I'm going to cut out this next section here you have to keep all the bits till you've got the whole pheasant there. just cut that out of some of the paper which can go there so this is just the plain collage paper draw around it I thought this was an easy um, way of getting the shapes right it looks very complicated don't worry about it you can just collage it anyhow you like but it looks, I don't know, it's, it seems quite a good way of doing it, but it's quite tricky to explain. So that bit would go there. And we start building up the pheasant. So I would keep adding to that. When I've got all the pieces cut out, then I'll glue them down. So let's bring this one back. I've got all the pieces cut out and I've glued them down onto this sheet of paper. The whole pheasant put together there. You can keep adding to it. I cut some little bits out of my stamped paper. I thought I might add some little extra bits on there at some point. So you can keep adding bits to it. And when you've got the whole pheasant done, then you just need to cut it out around the edges. 
and then you can put your pheasant onto your background. So I've made a background with a stone wall and some leaves behind it. And to do this, I use some pages from a magazine just with um, text on them. So just the writing bit like that. And I sponged some paint on it to give it this sort of look of the stone. I used the little dishwashing sponges. I also scrumpled up a tissue like this, dipped that in the acrylic paint and dabbed that on. And then I've cut the pages out and made the stone wall. The background here I've made with stencils like we did last week or the week before. These are two leaf stencils and I've just sponged the paint in and as soon as they're dry I've just put another one on next to it and built up that background. So the pheasant could sit on that brick there and that should look something like my photograph that I started with ages ago and now I can't find. Anyway, you saw it earlier. I'm not very organised today, am I? So there's the photograph. So there's the pheasant on the stone wall with the trees behind. So I've used stencils, sponging, different papers. I wasn't quite sure about the background, so I made another background. And this one, I've painted the stone wall in and sponged on it. And I've made a sky using tissue paper, magazine pages and watercolour paints. So I could put him on there as a different background, not quite sure. But it's just using all the different techniques that you've used over the last few weeks, building them up to make a collage. It doesn't have to be a, a, a pheasant and it doesn't have to be as complicated. There's some nice examples here on your worksheet. This little sparrow is lovely. Um, this one's got a dark background. So have a look at Mark Hurl's work, see what you can see out of your window and anything, plants, birds, fish, insects, whatever you can see, have a go at making a mixed media collage. I hope that made sense um, and I'll see you for the design week and um, we can go through all the techniques in the workshops and hopefully uh, you'll end up with a beautiful collage. That's it for now then and I look forward to seeing you in the next workshop but there'll be no more videos. Bye.